Hi, I'm Richard Wood Square, and today we're going to be going over how to handle webhook events. For anyone that is unfamiliar, webhooks are what is used to get near real-time information about events occurring in a Square account. To put it simply, a webhook is just a URL that Square will post data to when an event occurs. We're going to walk through an example serverless application model app, or SAM, that creates resources in AWS for handling webhook events. In order to follow along with exactly what we're doing, you'll need to have an AWS account, install the AWS CLI, and the AWS SAM CLI. We're still going to cover main concepts and best practices along the way though, so don't worry if you're not using AWS or serverless. We have links below for everything you need from AWS and Square for this tutorial. To get started, let's go ahead and take a look at the SAM application and how it is set up. You can clone the repository that is linked below to follow along on your own machine. I already have the app here, so let's take a look at what this app consists of. We can start off by looking at the template.yaml file to see what resources are being created in AWS. The template.yaml file is what defines the resources we want to create in AWS and how to link them all together. If we take a look in the resources section, we can see we have a webhook function, which has the type AWS serverless function. This creates a Lambda function in our account. Lambda functions are just small functions that only run whenever they are triggered. In this case, the Lambda function will be run anytime a POST request is sent to a linked API gateway, which is defined later in the file. The next few lines, we are saying what folder our code is in, then what our handler is. The handler here is just an exported JavaScript function, since you can see the runtime is Node.js 12.x. Next, we're giving our Lambda function a few environment variables for the table underscore name, which is the name of our webhook event table, and signature underscore key. For the signature key, we are using an AWS service called Parameter Store. We will be putting our webhook signature key and our parameter store under the key name signature underscore key so that we can pass that to our Lambda environment and use it to verify our webhook event requests. This will be more clear when we walk through the actual Lambda function. At the end of our webhook function section under webhook event, you can see that we're specifying a type of HTTP API. This actually provisions an API gateway HTTP API, which is what will give us an endpoint to receive webhook events at. We're also specifying the method as post since Square will be posting the events to our URL endpoint. Finally, we have the webhook event table. This just creates our DynamoDB table that all of the webhook events will be stored in using our Lambda function. It's important to point out a best practice here, independent of whether you're using AWS. When Square sends us an event, we want to let them know we got it as quickly as possible. We're storing the webhook events in a DynamoDB table so they could be processed later or by another service. This will be faster and reduce things that could fail since we want to only verify that we have a valid webhook event and then store it. This lets us send back a 200 response as quickly as possible. If we take too long to respond, or if the request has a timeout, Square will attempt to resend the event until we respond with a 200 status, like so. Or 72 hours has elapsed and the event is no longer retried. We have linked more info on webhook delivery times in our notes below. Now that we know how this application is structured, we should take a look at our Lambda function to find out how to validate our webhook events and store them. Here, we're taking a look at the app.js file under the webhook-function folder. We can skip over these imports since we'll cover what those do later. You'll see here that a Lambda function takes two parameters, an event object and a context object. For this function, we'll only be needing to use the event object. Since we have the Lambda being triggered by an HTTP request, the event object will have all of our request data in it that we need. Here on line 18, we have the start of the body of our Lambda function. The first thing we're doing in our function is pulling out some variables from our environment where the Lambda function is executing. Our table underscore name, which you should remember from our template.yaml files, is for specifying where to store the webhook event, and the signature underscore key, which was also in our template.yaml file. The signature key is used to create a hash for verifying the webhook request's integrity. Next, we are creating an HMAC object. This is using the createHMAC method from the Node crypto library. As a security measure, all webhook requests are sent along with a header that is a SHA-1 hash of our webhook request URL plus the webhook request body using the signature key to sign it. Since we know the signature key that Square generated for us, we can use it to verify that this webhook request actually came from Square and isn't bogus data being sent maliciously. You'll see on lines 30 and 31, we're updating our HMAC with the request URL and request body. Then we transform that into a base64 string. Next, we can check whether that hash we've generated matches the one in our headers. If it doesn't, we go ahead and log the error so that we could troubleshoot this. 
Additionally, we throw an error since we don't want to be processing anything other than square webhook requests here. This will stop the function from running and automatically log information for us into CloudWatch, which is the AWS logging service. If we find that our hash matches, the function continues and will parse out the body of the response and store that in DynamoDB. Then we simply return a 200 response back to Square to signal that we've received the webhook request. It's important to point out a couple best practices that we're doing here. We start off by trying to validate that we have a request that is coming from Square. We don't want to expend additional resources here prior to checking if the response is valid, so we can short circuit everything in instances where we know we have an invalid request. The other thing we're doing here is only storing the data from the webhook request. We don't really want to be doing additional processing here, since we want to respond to Square as quickly as possible that we've received the webhook request. You can then create some other service that will process that data that was received. Now that we know how our serverless app is structured and what the code is doing, all we really need to do now is deploy it. But first, let's go into our developer dashboard to create our webhook endpoint to get a signature key. We can go into our application page and go to the section for webhooks. We'll now go ahead and add an endpoint. Let's name our endpoint Sam App Webhook. For the URL, we'll just enter example.com since we're wanting to generate our signature key to upload into AWS so we could deploy the SAM app. We'll also select all for events. Now we can save it. We can then open up our webhook like so, and we'll see the signature key that we need. We want to take our signature key that we got from Square and now store that in AWS. To do this, we'll just use the AWS CLI, but you could also do this manually in the AWS dashboard if you'd like. To upload our key from the CLI, We'll run AWS SSM put dash parameter, then add a name flag and set that to signature underscore key. Then add another flag for value and paste in our signature key that Square gave us. And finally, add a flag for type and set that to string. We can now press Q to quit out of the CLI, and now we're ready to deploy our SAM app. To do this, we can just run SAM build and and SAM deploy. You can add the flag G to SAM deploy if you want to go through a guided prompt while deploying. Now, we just wait for AWS to create these resources using CloudFormation. Once it is done, we'll see it has emitted a URL for our API gateway that we copied to put into our webhook that we created in the Square Developer Dashboard. So let's head back over there to update that. We'll just click on Edit Endpoint, and then put in our URL that we got for API Gateway, and then we can click Save. Now, we can go ahead and test our webhook integration. To do that, we can click More, and then Send Test Event. We'll pick Inventory Count Updated from the dropdown. Once we click Send, Square will send a test event to our webhook endpoint and display the status of the response back to us. So let's go ahead and click Send Now. We got a 200 response. That means our webhook SAM app is working. Success! Now we'll get events stored in our DynamoDB table to see things happening in a Square Merchant account in real time. If you have followed along with everything, you could go into your AWS account to see the test events stored in there. Remember, this is only one way to approach implementing webhooks, but the key things to remember are to first verify that the request has come from Square, forward on or store the event data, and send back the appropriate response status as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching our Sandbox 101 on implementing webhooks. Happy coding!